Hi, this is Cindy from Vintage to New. Are you looking for a project that would help someone learn how to do just a few basic sewing skills that would be really fun that you could do on a rainy day or in a summer afternoon? This little bracelet, it, it has some very basic sewing skills. It has the ability to teach someone how to sew on buttons, how to do a little bit of hand stitching, and the tiniest little bit of hand embroidery. So without delay, let's get started right away and I'll show you how to make this bracelet. So let's get started right away. I went through my scrap bin and I had a piece of linen that um, was actually an old shirt that I had cut up and saved the fabric. And then I wanted these to have just a little bit of body but to be um, not so hard to get a hand needle and thread through so I put what's called shirt weight pellon on the inside. It's just a really nice lightweight pellon to give it a little bit more body and to keep it from being stretchy. And so I cut off three inches on, wide on this side. Now, um, of course, you can make these any width that you want, but by the time we sew this up, it will be less than an inch and a half. I'm going to fold it in half, right sides together, matching up my raw edges, and just do a little hand press down, down the side like this. On one end, I'm going to sew across, do a pivot, and come down and sew the other side. So here you can see that I did my sewing and um, I'm going to trim this off here really close to my stitching but not clip my stitching. I'm going to trim off the end down to a generous eighth of an inch. I sewed it at a quarter inch seam. And then I'm going to trim this down here on the side. Now depending on who you're making these for, if you're going to make these and give them as a gift, they can be any width that you want. On an adult, a wider one would be really cute. If you're making these for a child that you're trying to teach how to learn how to sew, um, they could, depending on their age, do this much. But the idea is, is the decorating part that's going to come up that um, I plan on working with my six-year-old granddaughter, teaching her how to sew on buttons and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to just take my bone folder and I'm just going to start pushing it up the center of this little tube here. And I'm starting on, on the end that's sewn and I'm just going to work it and work it and work it until I can get it started. And just wiggle it gently but firmly all the way down. Once you get it started, it goes a little bit easier. So here we go. Then once you get one end out, take it and just pull. Then take your bone folder on the turn tube and gently push the corners out. Um, you could use a chopstick for this, something like that. Do not use the end of your scissors because you will poke a hole in it. And that's a sad day because it really ruins the, the work that you've done. So, And now I'm going to go press this flat. I got it turned and pressed. I measured it to the length I want. So if you're going to make these bracelets and do the sewing like this, but you want to teach somebody how to close this, they're new to sewing, knot your thread so that it's together at the end, and that way um, your needle just can't fall off the end, because that's keeping that part all juggled when you're first learning to do hand stitching is really hard. And if you have it, or if you plan on doing home sewing, a little bit of beeswax really does help keep your thread from getting knotted. So turn this down about a quarter of an inch inside the tube, across the open end. You can use your bone folder to help you get it in there nice and even, about a quarter inch down. 
Okay, so it should look something like that. Tan stitch this closed. So I'm going to make sure that that edge is poked down. I am going to make it so my knot is on the inside and come up. Okay, so that knot's going to be pushed down inside. We will never see it. And then we're just going to very carefully take a nick on this side and a nick on that side. Give it a little pull and just do the same all the way down this edge, closing it up. Okay, so now I'm ready to knot it off and I go like this, put my needle through the loop, pull it as a knot. I always do two of those and then I take this part and go down into my project, out down below here and then clip it off and the tail is caught inside my project. It's not just hanging out up here. So you can't see my knot where I started and you can't see the tail where I ended. And on your corners, if there's still a little bit of fabric stuck down in there, just give it a little tiny tug with a pin or your needle so that you have a nice square corner. So now we're ready to get started. Okay, so this is a time where you go through all of your goodies that you have squirreled away. If you're a sewer, you have years worth of things stashed away or if you're just new to sewing you will start and the next thing you know you're going to have this giant stash of stuff so i wanted to show you these little buttons i purchased these on amazon just a couple months ago they're little uh, daisy flowers and they just have two center holes inside of them to sew on. Those would be so cute to teach somebody how to sew a button. These are the same idea, just bigger. Bigger little buttons, daisies with polka dots. These are um, little birds, all different colors. Little bird buttons that you could sew on or you could teach somebody to sew on. And then uh, these, I've shown you these before in uh, some videos. They're just, all of these that I've shown you so far are wooden buttons. So they aren't great for clothes because they're not really washable, but for something like a craft project, they are a lot of fun. I will put a link to my Amazon where I got these down below. And if you're interested, you could look or find some of your own. The other thing I have is um, little containers of lace. My last video was some stitches for embroidery. So for today, I wanted to do some buttons, some embroidery. Um, and so if you don't know how to embroidery, go back one video and watch the tutorial on the five stitches to get you started. Okay, so sometimes the secret to success in sewing is having lots of interest and lots of layers. So I'm going to start out by tacking on this little piece of lace. And so to do that, I'm just going to go down like this and tack it all the way down. Now, the back of my bracelet eventually is going to have stitches on it, so it's not going to be um, beautiful on the back. But this, I can just go through the first layer and stitch this piece of lace down. So I'm going to go all the way down this side. Then I'm going to turn and go up the other side. Okay, I've sewn my lace on and on purpose, I didn't try to make it a super straight line. I kind of went ziggy zaggy a little bit. Um, if you're not going to try to make it perfectly straight, don't go for straight. Make it a little bit interesting and different and for a beginner they would be more successful um, not trying to be perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to start at one end and one of the stitches that we talked about in that video was a running stitch. And so you just go in back and forth like this. Do about, depending on the size of your needle, three little stitches and then pull it and be sure you don't pull it so that your um, that you're gathering it up. 
you don't want that because you want it to stay the right size. So just go in and out doing a running stitch and maybe for a beginner it would be better just to do one in and out at a time. Okay. And I'm using three strands of embroidery floss just like we did in the video. So just in and out. And the goal is for them to try to learn to do it straight. You could use your um, Frixon pen and draw them a line to sew on. That might be easier. And just go like this back and forth. Now um, remember when you're teaching somebody how to sew, this back end of your needle sometimes will poke your finger too. So teach them to um, either wear a thimble or to go to hold it on the end, to hold it like this, not like this, they'll poke their finger. And that's never fun until you get a callus, which if they do it enough, they will. So just in and out. So go down both sides of your bracelet doing this little running stitch. Here I have it with my running stitches down both sides. Now the side that has the, um, the seam that you did, have them do the stitching on the inside of the seam instead of trying to go through all these layers that are right here along the edge. And also remember we're going to put a snap down here at the ends or if you're really adventurous you could put a button on a buttonhole. But I plan on using a snap, so leave room down here where you can not put buttons or something so that you can attach the snap. So I think what I've decided to do is to do three of the little polka dot buttons. All right, so I'm just going to sew those on and then I'm going to use multiples of white buttons. So in like in groupings of three non-matching buttons like that and then maybe one here and one here still leaving room for it to lap over and to snap. So to sew on a button I'm still just using that doubled up thread with the knot. I come in from the back and I would probably sew through the center of the button at least three times, four times, something like that and then tie it off. Okay, so I sewed on my three flowers and they're not in a straight line. One is down, up, and down so that it, it doesn't have to be perfect and it still just looks really good. So now I'm going to do a set of three buttons in between that are different sizes and even though they're all white, they're different colors. So I'm going to do three here and three here and then I'll be right back. Okay, so my little buttons, my three of each of the white are sewn on. So now I want to add some little leaves uh, to my flowers and this is that lazy daisy stitch that we learned. So I'm going to come up like that and I'm going to kind of hold the button out of the way, go down the same hole. You come out where you want the end of your leaf to be and refer back to the video on how to make a lazy daisy stitch if you don't know how. And be sure and leave a nice little loop and go back down on the outside of your leaf like so. So I did one there and I'm going to do one coming out over here. Okay, so I found where I could sprinkle in um, a few little pink buttons in between. So it looks like this. So the last thing I'm going to do is fill in little spots with some nice buttery yellow doing French knots and that's in the um, video that I linked linked in the video. So this looks like a nice little spot here and I'm going to do each of the sets in sets of three knots. So doing three of them in a cluster together makes a nice little um, finish. So I think I'll do a cluster here and here. Oh, maybe one here and here. So I'm just going to zigzag them through and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. So here is the bracelet so far. Um, I added my yellow dots in groups in clusters of three and then I went back with this really pretty little blue green color and just did wherever there was a spare empty spot 
just one more French knot. And on these singles, I used all six strands of the embroidery floss. So here's our little bracelet. So now I'm going to show you how to put the snap on it. Over the years, these little um, vinyl snaps have become um, very popular. I purchased mine through Cam Snaps, K-A-M Snaps, but there's other manufacturers that make them too. And all they are are these little pokey ends and then the the any and outy part of the snap that goes on the inside. So whenever you use these you really need to put your thinking cap on because when you put them in they're really hard to get back out. So I'm going to poke a hole. I'm going to put my first snap here. So you just push this spike up through your fabric and it doesn't matter which one of these you put on one of the inside pieces and the little cap goes in this black end here it's got a dip in it that's just the right size so you put it in and then you just squeeze it and it smashes the inside of that spike so that it holds on the snap alright so I'm gonna measure All right, so I want my next one to be about right here. I'm gonna poke my hole. I'm gonna poke it nice and big. So then I have to think. I want the inside pokey part to be on the inside of the bracelet. Like that. And then this part that snaps to go here and I want to double check and yes that's going to line up and snap. Um, it's so easy to put this piece in the wrong side and then it's it's a real problem. So double check your work before you do it. Give it a snap. And so here is our little bits and bobs bracelet that we made using just things that we had in our stash. And so hopefully someone has learned a little bit of embroidery, how to sew on a button, and depending on where they're at in their sewing, maybe they even sewed the straight lines with the sewing machine. So until next time, this was Cindy from Vintage to New.